Well, would you look who it is? Dan Ives once again talking Tesla. And the headline on this video really caught my eye. Apparently a jaw dropper event, which funnily enough makes Dan one of the few folks, if any, actually on Wall Street who had anything meaningfully positive to say about Tesla's autonomy event. The consensus opinion, as expected, was, quote, disappointing and let down. So I've got to give some credit to Dan here by going against the grain, a rare quality among many of the Wall Street analysts when it comes to Tesla. All right, we saw the big 1010 event, the robo-taxi event from Tesla. It was certainly a highly anticipated event. It was supposed to be 8-8. It happened on 1010. It was dubbed We Robot. It included the Tesla robo-van, full self-driving technology, the Optimus robots, the uh, cab, the cyber cab. There was a lot that went on. But were people impressed? Let's find out what Dan Ives has to say, Managing Director, Equity Research at Wedbush Securities. Good afternoon to you, Dan Ives. Were you impressed? I mean, we were very impressed. I mean, I thought in 25 years of going to events like this, this was, I think, a jaw-dropper event relative to the technology that's coming out. Now, look, did it lack details? Yeah, and that's the reason the stock's down. I get it. But in terms of cyber cab, autonomous, the future, what I believe, and when I look at Optimus and in terms of where that's going to go, unsupervised FSD, Texas, California. I mean, Nicole, in my opinion, you walk away from there more bullish, not less bullish, but that now it's about execution. But I don't think there's anything that was disappointing coming out of that, what I view as just really a historical event that we'll view as historical three, four years from now. So, again, I've got to give credit to Dan. I mean, I agree with what he's said, although it's pretty funny that his price target is a, quote, mere $300 per share if he really believes the potential of autonomy and the humanoid robot. But Dan out here low-key firing shots at many of the colleagues on Wall Street who did claim the event was disappointing. It was anything but. To reiterate some of the key points, Tesla unveiling their two-seat robo-taxi, no steering wheel, no pedals, some major numbers thrown out there, including a 40 cent cost per mile long-term, including taxes for the robo-taxi is incredible, the robo-van, five to 10 cents per mile, unsubsidized long-term. Tesla can hit these two targets. The scale of the disruption, the opportunity, the revenue and the profits the company's gonna make long-term, unfathomable. Never mind the Optimus humanoid robot, which by the way, a lot of people were a little bit confused are these fully autonomous? Is there some teleoperation? Is there a person talking through a microphone speaker on the other end? Like, what's going on here? I'll be sharing more details on the Optimus Humanoid Robot soon. But there was a lot less human operation than many people are hypothesizing. A lot of folks, I think, saw what the Optimus Humanoid Robots were doing and assumed, well, there's no possible way that Tesla could be that far ahead with the robot. Therefore, it, it must be completely teleoperated by a human. There must be a person on the other end listening to what I'm saying and speaking through a microphone on the robot. Boy, are they in for a shock. I think some people were disappointed with the 2027 timeline. Were you taken aback by hearing 2027? Well, I mean, CyberK is at 2026 in terms of production. I think the unsupervised full self-driving Texas, California in terms of 2025. I actually think the reason the stock's down was because there was no... By the way, just on that... I it's amazing to actually hear Dan point this out. I haven't heard anyone else describe 2025, Model 3 and Y, beginning to operate as robotaxis in Texas and California. This was a huge disclosure. Now, obviously, it's a prediction. You never know what's going to happen. But it's already mid-October 2024. In the next 12 to 15 months at most, Tesla expect their first robotaxis to begin operating. Not to specifically designed hardware that production begins a little bit later. But with an over-the-air software update, Model 3s and Model Ys in California and Texas to begin picking people up and dropping them off end to end with a massive cost advantage because you don't need to pay a driver. Next year, again, I'm saying right now, it's October. I'm talking to you a few months before next year. Next year, Tesla believes that their first autonomous vehicles begin operating in the United States. And if you needed proof that on average, investors don't believe Tesla, not even close, they probably don't think it's for half a decade or more, Tesla's market cap, as I record this, under $700 billion. A Model 2 announcement in terms of the, the sub 30K vehicle, the next gen, we think there'll be a Model 2 and a Model 2.5, but they were never going to do it there. Th that's something we still believe is in 2025. But I think as we've seen many times, investors in Tesla, they want more. And, I, and But that's not necessarily their style. They are going to lack details. Then you'll get more... I think on the earnings call, 
and then more as we go into next three to six months. But it's not a reason to sell the stock. I actually think the future of yeah. Tesla is brighter today than it was a year ago. Good. Good. Look, over five days, the stock's down about 9%. One year, it's down about 13%. So it hasn't been a great performer, though it certainly had a lot of volatility and did make an incredible comeback at times. You have a $300 target. You are feeling optimistic. Um, there, It just felt like a lot of folks were finding things wrong. They, they didn't feel the optimist robots were fully autonomous, that there were some humans controlling at least part of those robots. Now, Nicole's making an interesting point. I, it, it, it blows my mind. It really does. You see this event? It's mind-blowing stuff. It illustrates Tesla's seriousness in the pursuit of autonomy. I mean, they finished designing the two-seat cyber cab. They unveil the RoboCab, which is going to massively disrupt public transportation. Never mind the variations on that. There'll be different internal configurations. You'll also be able to buy an RV version as well. Shout out to Van Life. A phenomenally positive event. You just have to think a little bit. But so many people ignore or disappointed... And on the humanoid robots, again, more details on this coming most likely tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And believe me, you're going to want to watch that video. But a lot of people just coping hard. Well, there's no way those humanoid robots are really that good. It must be completely teleoperated and there's a person talking to a microphone. <laughs> like I said, they're going to be in for a rude shock. It's a bit of a, well, it's too good to be true, therefore it can't possibly be true kind of coping mechanism, I think even though they were said to be walking with artificial intelligence. Um, were you disappointed on that? Or, you know, the humans were assisting by remote control, maybe? What did you find out exactly? I mean, look what Musk just did this weekend with SpaceX. I mean, the point is that it's all an iterative process. But when you look at Optimus, I believe in the next few years, I mean, you will start to see robots in-house. And that's something that's also going to be key in terms of factories and where this is all going, but it's gone away from beta toward what I view as more of not just the prototype, but really the, the multi-phased approach to getting this to become a reality. And, and, and I would just say, when you go to Apple's event for iPhone 16, they hate or say there's nothing there. And I know. Before. Well, let, let's be honest, okay? There's not a whole lot there. The iPhone itself was the innovation. What are we like, a decade and a half ago? Since then, the iPhone... It's got better, but it's still an iPhone. I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong. There hasn't been a whole lot of innovation. It's been iterative and incremental improvements on what was a massively innovative technology. I personally can't understand why Apple fanboys and fangirls get so excited about a few more megapixels in the camera and a slightly faster processor every year. But hey, that's just me. I can understand why people might get a little bit excited about the world's first ever mass production fully autonomous cyber cab, the world's first... Robovan, the world's first pursuit of fully autonomous vehicles in general via a software update and the humanoid robot. Be proven wrong. Three years ago, they complained that Jensen, Godfather of AI, and NVIDIA are focused on AI. They should be focused on gaming. Look how that's played out. I'm just, my whole point is, right. is that it's about where it's going. But again, many of the bears, they don't yeah. see that in their spreadsheets. Bro, I feel like Dan's borrowing some of my lines. I doubt it. You never know, though. But, I mean, I've got nothing else to add. That was, that was nice to hear. Dan Loki trolling people earlier on saying that it wasn't disappointing. Far from it. A jaw-dropper event. And now we hear mention of things in the spreadsheet. Bro, I'm liking where this is going. And you got to wait. I mean, you have to have a lot of patience, right? Because, you know, you're holding a... $300 target. It's sitting at 219 and you've had targets that are higher. And we hit some of the targets that you've had that were higher over the last five years that we've been talking. But sometimes there's pullbacks. And um, yeah. I just noticed, by the way, on screen, some key points here from Wedbush Securities. Cybercab fleet segment could be a $10 billion annual business at scale. So let me just share some back of the napkin math here for you guys. In order to reach $10 billion of annual revenue, if you'll recall, Tesla mentioned a $0.40 cents per mile figure. That includes taxes, though, but we'll just run with that once the vehicles are scaled. That would require about 25 billion miles in a single year at $0.40 cents per mile to bring in $10 billion of annual revenue. But Tesla mentioned their actual cost could be less than that. So we could cut this in half, meaning 50 billion miles would be required annually. Today, the average taxi does about 70,000 miles per year or so. And Tesla were mentioning their costs could be sort of 20 to 30 cents per mile. So what we'll do, just to keep these nice and simple, instead of using 70 or so thousand miles per year, we'll bring that down to 50,000 miles per year. 
That would mean the number of vehicles required would be somewhere in the vicinity of 500,000 to 1 million vehicles to bring in that $10 billion a year. Tesla's current fleet today is a little bit more than 500,000 vehicles, a little bit more than 1 million. It is, in fact, 7 million vehicles on roads and growing rapidly. So within just a few years, this is an entirely feasible scenario, an extremely high profit margin business as well. You know, people get frustrated waiting. They really do. And, you know, as far as the cyber cab, uh, you're saying what an impressive design it was. Others were saying, why does it only have two doors? Um, you know. I don't know how to say this politely, but guess what? I don't give a shit. Okay, there's a lot of people with very small brains who are a little bit like, oh, why would you make a two door? I don't understand. It should be a four seater. The cyber cab is not a vehicle being designed to sell to customers to purchase for their own personal use. It is a vehicle specifically designed to provide transport as a service autonomously. 90-ish percent of all trips in an Uber, a taxi, it's one or two passengers at most. That's what this product is for. In addition, if you're a family of four, you need, guess what, just order two. Crazy idea, I know, it's, it's wild. Alternatively, order a Model 3 or a Model Y instead, which will also be able to do the exact same job. The reason for the Cybercab is a two-door, two-seat vehicle with, by the way, a massive trunk, is because it's designed to meet the needs of the 90 or so percent of people today who take a taxi or an Uber. Huge storage for luggage, items, groceries, whatever, but nothing unnecessary. You know if they make a four-door, four-seat or five-seat vehicle, right? It costs more. It's wasteful. This is the ultimate manifestation of efficiency. The best part is no part, and that includes a door. The best part is no part. That includes a seat that you don't need for 90 plus percent of trips. And remember, the Model 3 and Model Y will operate autonomously and fill the need for those people who need more seats or alternatively, like I said, just order two of them or three. Not a big deal. Again, you do need a brain to realize this stuff. So there's that. But yeah, many of the critics and skeptics, why would you do that? It should have four seats and four, no, no, idiots. Did you think that? I mean, I view it as it's two doors, but where is it going to be in the next two, three years? I mean, from a prototype, this is also important in terms of what's going to be on the next gen platform being produced along with Model 2. And I think Tesla goes into an event where the bears come into the event at their keyboards, ready to just focus on the negatives. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Um, this guy has absolutely nailed it. Dude, Dan's on fire. This may be, in fact, my favorite ever appearance from Dan Ives in the finance media. This is just delicious. He's absolutely right, by the way. As we know, hate is going to hate, no matter what they see. Being live at the event, seeing it, seeing the products up close, and interacting obviously with many of the consumers, yeah. we walk away yeah. from there more excited, not less. I have a lot of questions for you, but you did mention SpaceX over the weekend, and I saw, I saw the video how those chopsticks catch, you know, the part of the rocket. It was pretty incredible. It was monumental. It was the first ever, right? Um, what did you think when you saw how it made that catch? I mean, I think it just shows I'm a big fan of SpaceX and everything they've done, and obviously, you know, so is NASA. This is one of the biggest achievements we've seen, I'd say, in modern day space history, you know, in terms of ultimately where this is all leading up to. I think the things that SpaceX are doing are just are monumental. But it but it broader speaks to go back a few years ago, the skepticism on SpaceX. I'm just saying I think like when you look at where these things are heading, these are kind of glimpses of the future that I think we saw, especially when it comes to autonomous, when it comes to SpaceX. And, and I think this is just, uh, okay. I, think, I think it's one really just the tip of the iceberg. Do you think um, that SpaceX goes public and would you be um, a fan of that stock when it does? I mean, this SpaceX rocket booster that was successfully caught, it was the first attempt, it was a flight test, you know, with the Megazilla arms. It was monumental to see. Do you think SpaceX goes public? We're going to have an IPO conversation coming up. Or is Elon Musk tired of being, uh, you know, looked at with a microscope and having Tesla under the microscope is enough? I mean, look at the private rounds, right, that SpaceX has done. I mean, you see, obviously, the reception there. But I think these are going to be, you know, you'll talk about a lot, but these are going to be big questions over the next 12, 18 months. Some of the biggest innovation we've seen in 40, 50 years are happening right now between AI, right. space, robotics, okay. a lot of companies, SpaceX front and center, yeah. you know, in terms of where there's all heading. Definitely my favorite Dan Ives appearance ever discussing Tesla. And one vital thing on screen now from Wedbush Securities, quote, Optimus is going to become a bigger piece of the Tesla story, duh. And now there is no credit for this groundbreaking robotic future, 
in Tesla's current valuation. And, I mean, it's hard to argue with that. As I've said, autonomy alone is a decker trillion dollar opportunity. And Optimus, at scale, increasingly intelligent, capable, useful humanoid robots, over the long term, from a financial point of view, will make autonomy and the financials from a fleet of potentially millions of robotaxis doing many, many, many billions of miles per year. Optimus is going to make that look like a rounding error. Sounds too good to be true, which is why I think most investors are completely ignoring this opportunity. I'm not one of them. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more, yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.